Hi, I'm Melissa and welcome back to the 30 day low calorie density weight loss challenge. Today is day 30. We have completed the challenge and I just want to say that I am so, so proud of you. I know this hasn't been easy to completely forego junk food, packaged foods, anything that contains oil. And I just wanna say that I'm incredibly proud of you for sticking with these super healthy, whole food, plant-based, low calorie density meals. I would love to hear how this challenge went for you. So if you participated for the entire month of March, 2021, feel free to leave a comment in the description box and let me know how you feel and how everything went. And if you are watching this video at any time in the future, you can start your own 30 day challenge by going back and watching the intro video to this series, which I will link in the description box down below. If you have experienced some bumps along the way and maybe had a few days of indulging in higher calorie density meals, then that's totally okay. You can just start again with your next meal, making it a healthy choice and sticking with those foods that are 700 calories per pound and less. And again, if you want any info about what low calorie density means and all of that, that's available at lowcaloriedensity.com. There's a lot of great info if you just click the button that says new start here. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you everything that I eat in a day and just give you some ideas of really easy meals that don't require complicated recipes. And before we get into that, I just want to say thank you so much to Chef AJ for interviewing me on your channel. It was so lovely to meet you and to chat with you. I have learned so much from the content that you've put out for so long and I just really want to say that it was an honor to be on your channel. If you haven't seen that interview yet, I will link it in the description box of this video. And if you want a lot of great whole food plant-based meal ideas and information and you're not yet subscribed to Chef AJ's channel, I highly recommend doing so. All right, it is smoothie time and today I'm gonna to be making a different smoothie. I've never made this one before. I'm gonna try pineapple, ginger, with a handful of dark leafy greens and banana. I think it'll be nice. I think the ginger will give it a little something extra. And I'm gonna be using about one and a half frozen bananas and I'm adding in 12 ounces of water and I've already cut my little chunk of ginger that I'm going to be using that's about an inch size. I will write down this recipe um, and put it on lowcaloriedensity.com if you want to make this exact smoothie. Now pineapple is one of those fruit that I find is a big chore to cut and um, I end up wasting a lot of it in the skin. Like you really have to be diligent to get all the fruit out of it. So it's just kind of nice to buy it when it's already chopped up like this. Saves you time in the morning. And I'm gonna pour out one cup of it. All right, so there's one cup of the pineapple chunks. It's about, I'd say, 10 or 12 pieces. And you could use baby spinach, but I'm just gonna use a handful of this organic super greens blend. And for the sake of the recipe, I will measure this out as well. Let's do a stuffed cup full of greens. And you can blend it up at this point, but if you want a little creaminess added to it, you can add a splash of unsweetened plant milk. I'm gonna be using soy, and I will use one third of a cup. All right, let's blend this all together. All right, so this makes 30 ounces of smoothie and depending on the day, sometimes Alex and I will both have a glass or if he's having something else for breakfast, then I will just fill myself a 16 ounce glass like this, drink that, 
put the lid on this and then finish the rest later. For lunch, what I'm going to do is I am going to dice up these two russet potatoes and saute them with this carrot and half of a diced onion. So I'm just going to saute them with some water and put the lid on the frying pan so that they uh, cook a little bit more quickly. And when you're not using oil to cook, you do have to stir everything a little bit more frequently just so that they don't stick to the bottom of the pan. And I'm going to take a few of these mushrooms and I'm going to dice them up as well, add them in uh, probably halfway through the cooking time, and then add in some frozen corn. I'm going to mix this all together, season it with cayenne pepper and cumin, and then drizzle some ketchup on top. That's about it. I've never made this specific concoction before, but with the ingredients that I happen to have right now in my fridge, freezer, and pantry, this is what I came up with. So let's see how it turns out. Now you might be looking at this and be thinking, what, two entire potatoes at one meal? Well, something that I like to do is always make a little bit extra just in case I am hungry again. In an hour or two, I can just have the rest of this meal and warm it up and it's just ready to go. I don't have to go fighting off cravings for packaged and processed foods like granola bars and chips and crackers and cookies because I have some of this meal left over and I can just go back and finish this off. But depending on how hungry I am on a particular day, I will eat the entire uh, amount at one sitting. All right, so I've also added in half of the diced up onion and a cup of water. And I'm going to put the lid on and let this cook on medium to high heat on the stove top for 10 minutes before adding in the other ingredients. All right, this is five minutes in and I want some of this water to absorb. So I've just taken the lid off for the next five minutes. All right, we're adding in half a cup of corn now. And I have diced up seven mushrooms. And we're going to put the lid back on to let this all cook up nicely together. And then we're going to add some spices. All right, I'm going to add in the cayenne pepper and cumin. Now the cook time for this is really going to vary depending on how small or large you cut the pieces of potato and carrots. So I've tried to cut them quite small and as you can see it's much softer now, semi mashed and I'm just going to let it cook a tiny bit more and then uh, put it on a plate. Something that you could add to this as well is some black beans. I think that would be quite nice. So that's like 75% of what I made on the plate here. I'm just going to put a tiny bit of garlic powder and now I'm going to drizzle some ketchup on top. There we go. And I try to use ketchup that has no high fructose corn syrup. You could put some sriracha on top if you want it to be a little bit spicier, but that's it. Super easy lunch, and for someone who doesn't like sweet breakfasts, this could be a savory breakfast idea for you. All right, as a snack, I am having a Bengal spice tea, one of my favorite teas, and five of these mandarins. Alex and I got such a good deal on these. This three pound bag was $1.80 something. 
So we bought three of them and we've been eating them non-stop. And you know, sometimes when you buy them, they're not as good. Well, this time they've been amazing. Like literally almost every single one has been really fresh and juicy and delicious. So that was a really good find. These to me literally taste like candy. They're like sour candies, so good. All right, for dinner, I am going to make a rice bowl and I've already got some of this Thai jasmine rice cooked. So I'm just showing you the rice that I use, but I've already got that made. And I've also um, got some lentils that I wanna use up. So these are already cooked as well. Um, I am making this up as I go, so I will be sure to write down all of the ingredients, the amounts I use, and the cooking instructions if you want to make something similar. I've got a lot of kale that needs to be eaten up. Actually, I probably should have put some of this in my morning smoothie, but maybe I will do that tomorrow. Um, so I'm going to take quite a bit of this, uh, de-stem it and wash it really well, and chop it up and saute it with the other half of the onion from lunch. And I'm going to cook some edamame, some frozen corn, some chickpeas, and then season all of this with a bit of soy sauce and some lemon juice. Now, if you have fresh lemons, then by all means use them. I go through lemon a lot. I add this to my water. I add this to many of my dishes. So I find it really convenient to have a bottle of lemon and lime juice on hand. And if you want to make this completely salt free, then you can skip the soy sauce and then you can just season it with some other of your favorite spices like garlic powder, onion powder, paprika, dill, whatever you need to add to make it really flavorful and enjoyable for you to eat. All right, so this is four de-stemmed leaves of kale. And I think it's gonna make about two cups full once chopped up, but we'll see. And I'm gonna chop this up really, really, really finely. Okay, let's see how much spinach that was. One cup. Let's call that two cups of spinach. So for the recipe, I'm gonna call that two cups of spinach. It's so bright and vibrant, the color. Fun fact, dark green is my favorite color. So we've got the kale in the pan and also the diced up half of one onion. And I'm adding in half a cup of water. And I'm going to put the lid on for five minutes and see how this is looking. In a separate pan, I've got half a cup of frozen edamame and half a cup of frozen corn. And I'm adding in a splash of water and cooking that on medium heat for about five minutes. Once this mixture here is warmed up, I will add in the chickpeas and the lentils just to warm them up a bit as well. All right, half a cup of chickpeas and half a cup of red lentils. And I'm just gonna leave this on medium for another three minutes. I'm going to add a splash of the lemon juice and soy sauce to the kale and onions now so that they absorb some of that flavor. All right, so I used half of what I made for this edamame lentil chickpea mixture. And this is two cups of cooked white rice. And this is all of the kale. The kale shrinks up quite a bit when you cook it. And I'm gonna put a drizzle of soy sauce all over everything. And voila, that's it. And the leftover rice and leftover edamame mixture I'm gonna have as my lunch tomorrow. 
Now this is how I set up my plate to take a photo so that you can see everything that is in this. But how I eat it most often is like this. Put everything in a mixing bowl to get all the flavors mixed together. And I mix everything together and I just find that it tastes better like this. I just enjoy having the mixture of all the flavors in every bite. And sometimes I'll add in more spices at this time as well. Maybe some paprika or some dill. And my, you know I love my chili flakes and my garlic powder and my onion powder but I'm just gonna leave it with the lemon and the soy sauce this time. And that's how it looks. Maybe not as appetizing and as Instagram-y, but it tastes really good. Voila, that's how it looks when I usually eat my meals. All delicious and mixed in together like that. All right, as a dessert, we are having some oatmeal with frozen blueberries. And I'm gonna add lots of cinnamon on top and a drizzle of unsweetened soy milk. That's about two cups of cooked oatmeal. Now I'm just gonna add a splash of soy milk. and cinnamon. And mix it all together really well. The blueberries were frozen, but the heat from the oatmeal kind of warms them up slightly. All right, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.